All right, guys, good morning. This morning we're gonna get work on the, the caboose, the restroom caboose, the mobile trailer restroom unit that's gonna look kind of like a train caboose. We're starting with this axle. This axle's too wide because it'll stick out from under the dimensions that we have in our head for the caboose. So I've got to cut it, weld it back together and get it going. Let me put you on the tripod. So the way we're cutting this axle is not ideal. If I was building this trailer to pull down the highway, I would never do it this way. I would do it in a shop setting and I would pull the spindle out the end and cut the end of the axle tube and re-weld the spindle in. But since this axle was already butchered and Frankenstein in our camper when we were stranded on the side of the road, the welding shop had already cut it in the center. I wanted to cut that weld out so I still only had one, one weld in there. So I went ahead and took the section out I needed to shorten it up and I put me a piece of angle iron on there and clamped it down and got it got it straight like I wanted it, checked it with a four foot level, made sure it was straight in every direction. I put an angle finder on it to get my spring perches in the right location so they were oriented together. And then I started welding over the, over the top of it. Tack it a couple places on this half of the axle, get the angle set right, then I can put the clamp down on that end, raise that jack up or whatever. If I get somewhere to stick it to it. Turn the heat up on this end the wide open. So this piece of angle iron that I clamped on top of the axle, I tacked it in place on the left half of the axle first. Took an angle finder, zeroed out my spring perch on, on that side. Once it was tacked, I went to the other side and I zeroed out the spring perch on that side and I went back and forth till I made sure they both stayed on zero. Then I tacked the second half of the axle. And this held it in place. Originally, I was gonna take this angle off and only use it to line up the axle and just butt it together and weld it like the welding shop had done. But once I got into it, I decided to just leave the angle iron on there and weld it down and it would just strengthen a little bit more and it worked. it'll work for what we're gonna use it for anyway. So I welded this angle iron nearly all the way down, but not completely. And then I also welded the butt end what was exposed, kept rolling the axle so I could get to it. And then ended up with a really strong axle to say it's only gonna go about two mile an hour across, across a lighted path ranch and seldom we move at that. So it's gonna, it's gonna work good for us. Yes, yeah, so I could have bought an axle the size I needed. I could have bought metal and built a metal frame to build this on top of. Could have, could have did a lot of things different and spent a lot more money doing it. But God's called us to build this camp and this ranch. And part of that calling is to be good stewards of what the Lord's provided for us. Because every dime that we put into the work here, every piece of material is, is not ours, but it's the Lord's. It doesn't come from anything that I've done or my wife's done. It's come from what God's given us. Level, and a lot of this material that we're using on this project is going to be left over, not good for much else. The boards will be cut too short to build walls with on a, on a cabin or a house, and it'll be just just making good use of the materials at hand so that they don't go to waste. Most of this stuff that we use on, use are using on this project alone right here would have been thrown away by contractors, but it's still good, usable material. And, and when we're done, we, we're balancing being good stewards and using this older material and then making a good final product that's going to bring glory to God. Because after all, it, it doesn't belong to man, it's God's. People have told us that our barn was too nice for a barn. It was nice enough to live in. Yeah, it's, it's not a house, but it is, it is pretty nice for a barn, but, but it's God's barn. It's not my barn. It's God's barn, and this is his camp, his ranch.
That's why it's called a lighted path wrench. I'm continuously checking with the four foot level as a straight edge to make sure that the axle is still in a straight line that I'm not pulling it or moving anything as I'm tacking the angle iron into place. For those who are wondering why there's duct tape on the top of my welding helmet, because I'm in need for a leather to go on there to the shade the sunlight out that's coming in the back and blinding me and messing with my screen. I'm not a professional welder by any stretch of the imagination, but somebody with an old little small wire welder out in the woods, I'd say it's gonna be good enough that she'll hold, especially for the purpose we, we're working on here. And this thing will never leave the ranch. So we got the axle cut down to the proper size. Now we can start building the platform and the rest of the caboose trailer on top of it. We'll have a mobile restroom that we can pull down to the cabin sites where we're building and campers can also use it along the way. Thanks for watching. And remember as always, God gets the glory for all the good in my life and Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. God bless and we'll see you next time.